Hi guys, welcome back to Lunatic Astrology. Hi guys and girls. Um, this is your astrologer, Lori Lothi, and we're talking about Mercury moving into Leo. He'll be there from July the 19th until August 30th, he's moving very quickly. And he's also becoming visible in the evening sky at the very end of July. Uh, we will make a beautiful sextile, I mean, trying to Jupiter around July 23rd. You'll make a gnarly, gnarly tension with Saturn in a very, very hot sky around July 28th. We're gonna talk about how that might affect you based on your rising sign but you can listen for your sun and your moon sign as well you'll get the most accurate reading by listening to your rising sign don't know what that is check my description box below and you can actually get a free tutorial on how to cast your natal chart on free online software astroseek or astro.com but also on how to use the whole sign house system when you cast that chart people often ask me oh i look at my placidus chart and you're telling me that i have a planet going through XYZ house is so-and-so rising. And you know what? It's because we're using whole sign houses. That's how astrology works in the ancient world. And that's how it works when people do YouTube delineations. Alrighty, for the all signs readings. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about Mercury and what he means before we talk about what he's up to. Let me show you a picture, okay? I think it, you might like the, the sky story as a picture. This is the sky as Merc Mercury. This little guy with antenna here, as you can see, enters into the heart of the sun. I mean, it into the sign of Leo. He was in the heart of the sun on July the 16th, meaning he was joining forces with the sun at 24 Cancer and they were combining together. That's called a Kazemi. And I'm bringing that up now because it is when Mercury becomes visible around July the 30th as he moves far enough away from the sun, all right, to be seen in the sky again, in this case, the evening sky, that things that may have been happening around July 16th may suddenly pop into visible form in your life. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, I had a major download of a new novel during the Kazemi on the 16th. Maybe something big will happen, you know, around July 30th, connected to the beginning of a new fiction creation so yeah now mercury is going to go pretty quickly through leo i mean he will be out of there by august 3rd and i yeah i don't have my mic guys i'm on on a trip i'm on vacation and i don't have it um well i do have it but i'm not setting it up for you because it's just too much work so sorry if the audio is not my typical quality but anyway there you go and uh what i'd like to say about this transit of mercury he's making some pretty interesting connections to other planets as he zips along and i think it's worth noting that okay i think we'll all get some value from understanding that he will not be alone here he talks to other people as he moves i want you to think about planets having conversations with each other as they hustle through the sky and those conversations have meaning. So by the time we get to July the 23rd, as you can see, there is this beautiful blue triangle, a mini grand trine, very positive energy, and it's talking to good old Santa Claus, very godfather Jupiter. For each of us, and I'll do the all signs shortly, this is going to be a lovely day and it's going to even include a moon at the peak of this triangle with who athena the goddess of knowledge wisdom and strategy so get ready for that that's going to be really a sweet day for every one of us and that moon will be bringing us some kind of um new beginning on the new moon of july 28th <clears throat> but it's not quite there it's still in that last quarter phase so get ready then for um this kind of day to just shine for you and each of us will have a different version of that shining but you could get some, uh, you could learn something, you could get some knowledge coming to you, strategic knowledge, um, legal affairs are often Athenian things, good legal matters. You see, Mercury rules things to do with study, research, um, thinking, ideas, uh, travel, um, news, all kinds of news. This is a good news day, and it's a good day for travel, it's a good day for things to do with legal affairs as well. Um, <laughs> it's a good day to study something new as well, in case that's something that you're thinking of doing, or research something as well. And then later on, as he keeps trundling along, he's going to keep moving toward the end of the month into a series of intense energies. And I'm not going to mince words on that. And just so you know, Mercury trining Jupiter happens two to four times a year, basically. And so it's not that uncommon. All right. Last Mercury trine Jupiter. Oh, I don't have it. Sorry, but I do have this one coming up. So now once a year, Mercury will stand opposite of Saturn. And this is always like hard news, difficult news, uh, something in the news cycle that feels constraining, like this could be July 30th, some new lockdown measures or some places around the pandemic, I don't know, but yeah, we're going to feel it as harsh energy. So for example, August, around August 1st, 2021, 
um, Mercury and Leo did cross oppose Saturn in Aquarius. And you may not remember that, but we were beginning to see that vaccines weren't quite working <laughs> as expected. Delta was raging. And mask mandates, lockdowns, and vaccine passports began to come into effect. Because Aquarius is rules. Aquarius is the people, the masses, the people, the collective. It's also an air sign. And Saturn is constriction, restraint, and rules. Mercury is news information. So we saw that kind of thing last August. I hope we're not seeing it again. But with that uh, Uranus square Saturn, which is coming to a head in October, the Uranus Saturn squares did seem to connect to lockdown measures and pandemic restrictions back in 2000 and. 21 during those three times that Saturn squared Uranus and his last square almost not quite is in October. He doesn't quite square, so it's not nearly as gnarly, but it still could bring us into a place of feeling a little bit defeated by government measures if you're especially if you're already over it and you've had Omicron and everything else. So keep that in mind and you're just like whatever done with this pandemic. Um, I want you to pay attention then as well. To the fact that Mercury will square Uranus on July the 28th and on July 26th and 27th, he's also squaring Mars. Now, the opposition on the 31st, right, that I'm showing you here is kind of a culminating energy where we're ending something that's coming to a close, uh, that's coming at the end of the tension explosion of what I'm calling the big boom. And that's the North Node, Uranus and Mars in a triple conjunction. So as you see at the end of the month, you're gonna notice that Mercury is really, you know, not happy here. He's squaring this bird, it's building triple conjunction. And he's also, he's also in a, a kind of a increasing debate with Saturn where they're going to have some kind of head, head off with each other. Now I'm doing a separate bit, video for what I'm calling the big boom. Okay. It's happening in the end of the month around the August 1st and 2nd. And then just before that, there's a whole new moon. So I'm going to do a little more of that later for now. Let's go ahead and let's do the all signs. I'm having a sweat attack here because it is effing hot. And holy man, I need to open a window. Okay, Whew. give me a sec, guys. So I'm going to do the all signs today. And I'm going to do the all signs by giving you a picture of the sky. And I'm going to focus primarily on the picture of the positive day of July the 23rd. But I will talk very briefly about what that tension with Saturn that happens once a year could be about in your sky as well. But mostly, I'm just going to focus on the really good news if that is okay with you guys. So Aries, we'll start with you. Very sun, moon, and rising sign. As you can see, this triangle that's very positive is pointing to your third house. And where it points is often a place of great expression on the triangle, at the top of a triangle, right? So first of all, Mercury is delivering some sort of news, information, um, excitement, um, even leisure travel, or playful travel, or fun, or games, or lottery wins, uh, marketing, mercantile, merchandising, money. Um, business deals, entrepreneurial deals from your fifth house to your third house, sextiling that moon Athena and Jupiter supporting that. Now, Jupiter's moving really slow and his slow speed is because he's getting ready to station a retrograde at eight degrees. So he's a very potentized Jupiter in the house of you, in your body, in your personality, in the way you see the world, see yourself. A lot of Aries rising, especially, but sun and moon are feeling magnanimous, larger than life, leaderful, Faith, hope, and optimism are running at all-time highs. Now, I'm not going to lie. This could be very lucky for your money if you do something speculative, get a lottery ticket, or buy a stock that's you know way down in the markets, or if you want to do something in the entrepreneurial sphere of your fifth house. With the third house tying in here, it's also about teaching and learning, especially skills-based. And Athena there, oh my God, that's really about what knowledge and wisdom you wish to acquire. So pay attention, Aries, about a course you may wish to teach or take around the third, 23rd of July. This is a really exciting day. Now remember, um, you could also take a trip because <laughs> Mercury is a patron of, uh, sort of patron planet of travelers on the voyages, just, you know, keep them safe when they were traveling in the old world in the ancient days where 
traveling on the road was full of uh, terror and fraught with bandits and shit like that. So this is going to be like a sense of protection for travel because the third house is trains, planes, automobile, short distance travel, going to and fro. So yay for you. This could be a great day to plan a trip or take an important trip and it's going to work out well. Lastly, it's the online world, that third house, right? So things you're doing with your website or online shit stuff, excuse my language, which this is going to be really positive for you. I really swear a lot in my real life, guys, so I quite tone it down for you most of the time. So apologies. I am an Aries sun, moon, as well as Mercury. All right, lastly, anything else I want to say? Yeah, so then, yeah, there's some good news. And there's this big boom at the end of the at the end of the month. And I'm not going to do the big boom. There's a separate, separate video, but I would talk about the 31st of July. Go back to August 1st. The last time Mercury square, I mean, opposed... Um, opposed Saturn from Leo, and it was more of lockdowns and restrictions and mass mandates coming back as the Delta wave began to show up. And we realized we weren't done with this pandemic, apparently. So this, I wouldn't, I would think that something similar may happen, not for sure, but you never know. Or, there, but in your own life, that's, you know, you got more going on than just worrying about a pandemic. So for Aries, this is some kind of tension between the fifth house and the 11th. So you could have a friend, an elder friend, um, someone in authority in your larger social groups, kind of giving you some sort of of difficulty um, regarding things that are, you're doing in your fifth romance, fun, play, pleasure, children, entrepreneurship, and ick, all of a sudden you've got some kind of like someone's raining on your parade, okay, on July 31st. Someone's giving you a hard time. It could be some difficult conversations around those themes as well. And you may even step away from a group of belonging because it doesn't feel like it fits you anymore. Because with that Saturn Mercury uh, tension, it could mean like you're going to uh, have a blowout in your larger groups of communities to which you belong with the sun and leo uh, next to mercury as well um there's a, a kind of feeling that <laughs> um you kind of got a lot of hot heat uh you may be speaking strongly against somebody or something that is rubbing you the wrong way in your large groups of a connection um anything else i'd like to tell you about that No, I don't think so. And I, I apologize. I forgot that we're talking about the end of the month. So the sun will no longer be uh, in Leo then. So it's more like just you and your communication and the way you are having to deal with some kind of, oh yeah, of course the sun will be there. What am I talking about? It'll still be there um, on July 31st. But I, I just get a feeling, I'm going to finish up with you, Aries, is that because this Mercury uh, is in a fire sign and it's trining your identity, and it's, you know, and it's in a broad, and it's going to be in a broad energetic flow to that Jupiter in your first house, you're going to come out on top. So whatever this difficulty is with groups of belonging, social groups, and, you know, the larger social sphere, you're going to find yourself going way, way, way into good luck and things will work out. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just say, um, recording video <laughs> for another 20, 20, 24 minutes more. So also, um, I would also tell you that you have the energy of romance here. Mercury is in the romance house. This could be emails, phone calls, and text messages that are ongoing from the July 23rd to August 3rd timeframe with somebody that you are in some sort of a loving sexual romantic relationship with and that's a positive thing as you can see on july 23rd there could be an extra good special sweet spot around that correspondence let's keep going and i didn't mean to move by days i mean to move my little thingy by hours so let's go ahead and jump into Taurus. We're going to do that now. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. This beautiful triangle of goodness is peaking in your second house of earnings, voice, vocation, and money that you have to spend or things that you possess or things that you wish to dispossess yourself of, like sell your possessions, especially movable possessions. Now, I love this because it really looks like you're going to have some sort of fortunate circumstances, Taurus, around July 23rd, especially your rising signs, to do with your, your income and it could even be an opportunity of some sort. Jupiter means opportunity from backroom deals and negotiations in that 12th house that looks like a promotion raise or even like a new job. If that's something you're looking for, this could definitely happen. And with there's a stellium in your third house, a fourth house, there's things you're doing in and from your home that are looking really positive as well. This could be having enough money to buy a new sofa, enough money to redecorate your bathroom, enough money to buy the towel set or bedding set you really wanted. I don't know, but possessions, home, 
Jupiter opportunity. Um, this looks like a good little bit of time for beautifying your home and having a good things happen in your home, especially feeling abundant and fruitful and, and successful because Ceres is down there. She's kind of like a, a mini Jupiter and she's very much about what nourishes us. And you're really nourished in your home around the 23rd of July. Uh, I can't see any downside to this. With Athena in your second house, you may get some information or some kind of wisdom or strategy around earnings. And you may be, that may be the value of what happens on the 23rd. The th second house is a house of speech and you may speak something, okay, into being um, that is important for you to say. And it will be uh, a day in which speaking truthfully or speaking powerfully benefits you in your home life and in your earnings life. You may have to tell the boss, you know, you're not happy with something and you're gonna make uh, it open up. Um, so the next thing I wanna say is the big boomy tension that's coming at the end of the month, separate video, but let's jump past that to the 31st of July. We will have this opposition between Mercury and Saturn. The last time you saw that in the sky, in your chart where it is this time, was way back in August of 2021. And so it could look like some kind of tension with some boss or authority figure in the workspace and in a tension between what you wish to do in your home and your home life versus what you want to do in your work and your work life, okay? I'm just gonna stop the share for a second because I've got some sounds outside and I'm gonna just pause. I can talk to the people in the house I'm visiting because I'm in their home. <laughs> okay, it's funny doing work on the road, guys. <clears throat> you don't have, you know, your own space. So let's get back and finish up where I was. And we will get going through the signs again. So I'm trying not to talk too loud, but I don't have my mic. So I hope this is loud enough for you guys because I got other people in this house that I'm visiting. Um, so, so for some reason, I just don't see the chart. There it is. Okay. Back to, so back to Taurus. So watch for some conflict with an authority figure in your work, a boss, some kind of workplace, career place, constriction. Go back to August last year, what was going on. I know that for instance, a Taurus I know had some real tensions in her workplace at the time. She got COVID, but they wanted to come into work. She said, I'm not coming in sick. That was my daughter, FYI. <laughs> so you can expect that kind of conflict. And with an opposition between Saturn and Mercury, if you don't like your job or your boss, you might just up and quit. <laughs> Go back to the Kazemi on July 16th regarding themes of your workplace, because I think with Mercury's opposition on July 31st, and he's visible in the sky again, there is something going on that may be connected to that time frame as well. Okay, let's keep on moving. This is meant to be a rather uh, pithy video. All right, so on the, oh, there's a moth in here. On the um, chart sky here, you see the triangle pointing at the Gemini people rising, especially sun and moon. It will also be meaningful. I should be saying this for all of you, but certainly if your rising sun or moon is anywhere between approximately three degrees and 11 degrees of the sign of, in this case, Gemini, you know, you're really in a tight relationship to this whole event. So for you, Gemini, that's obvious, right? Because it's happening in the peak of this triangle is happening in the house of you. All right, so I think this is a very big energy here of opening up something, <laughs> uh, learning something about yourself, Athena, um, uh, uh, having an insight into yourself, um, seeing clearly something about yourself. Alrighty, those are the best ways I could describe it. It's still the tail end, all right, the waning tail end of a quarter moon. So it, it could be also pushing through uh, kind of with a finish line on something that you've been working on. And that it's also to do with your own effort, your own energy and your own ingenuity on July the 23rd. And yes, this chart says the 24th, okay, but it's because I'm moving things forward, but it is an action on the 23rd and the 24th. Also, um, one thing with Jupiter in the 11th, this is favors from your friends, guys. So you Geminis are like, oh my gosh, what a great day to have, you know, somebody that just wants to uh, bequeath you some lucky favors, some lucky breaks, friends and allies sticking their neck out on your behalf to really support you in some way way and because mercury rules news and he's over there in the third house of emails and um, online communication and technologies i'm, I'm going to say a lot of you will get an amazing message from some ally or friend and it could look like news coming through as an email a phone call well most likely an email or a text or something more high tech i'd say so i love this for you guys so if you're looking for some good news dispensed by a friend look no further than july the 23rd i'm going to get comfy guys because i'm not comfy there, that's better. 
Um, one of the things I would tell you is watch out though for uh, over exuberance uh, from that friend. I think Jupiter could be like, <laughs> Sometimes, you know, a friend who's, who's promising more than that friend can deliver. So there's just that as well. All right, I am going to go get a pillow to sit on. This is so not my comfort. Okay, I totally changed where I'm sitting. I'm going back to the chart. I apologize. I could not sit on that bench. It was so uncomfortable. All right, back to you guys. And yeah, <laughs> I'm really not in a place where I'm normally sort of used to working. And you guys know the drill. So sorry about that. Moving on. So anyway, watch for over exuberance, friends promising you a bit more maybe than they can actually deliver because I find Jupiter in the 11th house, he's in the house of his joy. But sometimes when it comes to the way things show up there, it's a very lovely placement for you. And you guys have that all the way through to December 20th and then back again. I mean, all the way to October 28th and back again, December 20th, all right, to uh, May of next year. So it's very positive, beautiful transit, but just watch for the person's over exuberance and what they promise. But otherwise it's so lovely. I just can't say enough about it. Now the third house is, you know, got that Mercury thing, perfect for travel, short trips, trains, planes, going about usually domestic or local travel, not too far from home, but travel is pretty blessed for you guys. So Gemini's get on the road, take a road trip, you know, take a short hopper flight somewhere. July 23rd is full of blessings, July 23rd and July 24th. Later on at the end of the month on the 31st, as I mentioned, you're going to find that tension that happened last August of 21, again, happening in the same place in the sky it's your third house and in your ninth house and there's this tension between mercury and saturn it's going to be kind of like mercury and saturn at 22 degrees duking it out with each other and it's intense energy there's no two ways about it you may find that that energy plays out as a spiritual authority like a pastor or a mentor or a guide or someone in a, your religious tradition giving you a hard time about something or rules and regulations around travel Saturn in the ninth house to foreign lands and foreign shores passports and visas and restrictions in that area really putting a slight damper on all this fun and joy and travel possibility that you've got concocted around the 23rd and 24th. Um, so you may get to take the trip, but now you have to wear masks and the plane again, damn it, or something like that. But uh, Saturn up here, go back to August of last year, how did this influence you to do with things to do with travel, short distance communication, or siblings, or travel, or siblings, siblings, your third house is siblings. So I'll finish up with uh, the end of the month could be a bit of gnarly news from a sibling that's really you and the sibling are having some tension or some constriction and a sibling was going to visit you, but they can't get out of their country because the pandemic has locked them in or something weird like that. Um, yeah, I'll just stay with that at this point. Let's keep going and move us forward to Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising sign people. So Cancer, in your story, this energy of the triangle of goodness this blue triangle on the 23rd and 24th. It happens to be looking straight at your 12th house where it peaks out with that last quarter moon. I feel like this is a very interesting story to do with things that you do in your own back end of your mind. You know, your ideas, your dreams, your meditations, um, your secrets, parts of you that you often don't explore your very own self and how they may be playing out in a flowing way with things you're doing in your purpose, career, and your reputation zone, your Jupiter in your 10th house. I mean, come on, Cancer, so Cancer rising, especially you guys are going to have a kick-ass career time as Jupiter is in that 10th house through to October 28th and back again, uh, December 20th throughout to next May. And this is a little foretaste of that. Backroom negotiations, deals, legal contracts, and uh, documents and assigning things can be happening because Mercury does all that stuff, contracts, legal agreements, and he's in the second house of earnings and money. So with that trying to Jupiter and with that backroom deals and negotiations of the 12th house, this can also look simply like July 23rd, 24th, um, negotiating a better salary, negotiating a better position, uh, big backroom deals to uh, increase your um, financial goodness coming from your purpose and career and work direction. Um, Mercury is about communicating, including speaking, and he is in Leo, very bold and dynamic and flamboyant in the house of speech. You may be called on to do a speech, to talk in front of a group of people, to do some kind of presentation as well. Around the 23rd, 24th, it should go extremely, extremely well. This is a lucky two days, no two ways about it. If you make money through PayPal, Stripe, or online stuff like that, um, 12th house can be that. This looks really good for a little boost as well. 
of money through those payment processors that you use for credit cards, Stripe and all that kind of stuff. All right, and then it's gnarly tension. Go back to August of 2021, because the last time that Leo and Mercury opposed Saturn and Aquarius in your two eight house, uh, eight houses, your stock investments, your 401k, um, your spousal shared resources, uh, tax money, inheritance money, that kind of thing. Some definitely some hitches at the end of the month and that money story for you. Maybe you want to liberate some money from a like a, a, um, an investment portfolio and you can't get it out. Maybe uh, your advisor tells you if you do, your taxes will be crazy. So you're feeling constriction around money that is in a locked in place, Saturn in the eighth, um, or your spouse won't release the money that they owe you or your um, inheritance gets bogged down in probate or something like that. And go back to August of last year to get a vibe for that and see it may be playing out once again this year. And, um, you know, as I said, it's a once in a year activation. And here it's here back again. And of course, it's it's Saturn in your eighth house. He's trying to help you sober minded, realistically clean up your, your money stories with shared resources with other people. And Mercury is engaging that story from the house of earning self-worth and self-possession and possession. So I don't know, maybe you have to stand up for yourself and communicate boldly with great courage, Leo, around something to do with money and earnings at the end of the month against some authority figure constraint or constriction as well. Leo, sun, moon, rising sign. So Leo guys, you guys are seeing this little beautiful triangle on the 23rd, 24th, pointing at your 11th house of good spirit. This is bringing uh, lucky breaks, good fortune, even pennies from heaven, for goodness sakes, are possible. Um, I do like the fact that the Jupiter in the ninth, you know, is <clears throat> loving up that moon Athena in the 11th. This can look a lot like something to do with um, some things from foreign shores or legal or court cases working out in your favor. And there's a sense of celebration in that regard or great positivity and uh, excitement. A female friend in a larger group of circle of friendships could be also involved in this because of that moon in Gemini. This Mercury is in the house of you. And of course, the sun is going through your sign. So, you know, this is your time of year to shine brightly. You feel it. You feel your whole essence light up as the sun spends its month long journey in the sign of you. And so until like the third week of August, you're like on fire. And so this is a positive July 23rd, 24th for all Leo rising sun and moon as well. And especially if your Leo sun, moon or rising is anywhere between about, I don't know, about three to 11 degrees of Leo, you're really getting a lot of energy coming at you from this, but all Leos will benefit as well. Okay, so just don't feel left out. I do think that you have the experience as well of um, maybe feeling just plain old blessed and lucky because the God of luck, Jupiter is trining your rising sign. So it's a time of luck for you in general, right? Um, as Jupiter moves through your ninth house, Aries area in whole sign astrology, um, you know, until October 28th and then comes out and then comes back again into that part of your sky, December 20th, add five months. So I do think you're going to find that you feel pretty lucky, but from the ninth house, it's luck from foreign shores, foreign lands, legal and court affairs, um, higher education experiences, um, spiritual teachers, gurus, guides, and mentors. Blessing you. So pay attention to those possibilities, July 23rd and 24th as well. At the end of the month, <clears throat> July 31st, there's that more gnarly Mercury opposite Saturn in the Leo part of the sky to the Aquarian part. That's about your primary marriage partnership. Some Leos, especially rising, may have found that with Saturn here for the last, oh my God, since December of 2020, that you have been finding your marriage to be difficult or your business partnership relationship to be difficult or feeling a heavy weight or feeling like it's a marathon of endurance in some way. A lot of times this transit can break couples up. And all of a sudden, like last August, go back when Mercury opposed Saturn from the house of you, did you have a fight with your partner or spouse or you're the one you're with? Uh, did you have big disagreements? Uh, did you guys see anything but eye to eye? Because it's back again. And hey, get ready, get set July 31st or so around that time. And you'll feel the energy of that a few days before and after, uh, especially if your rising sign Leo is anywhere between about 18 to 24 degrees of Leo. It's really going to hit you guys and your marriage and business partners far more strongly. 
Um, legal contracts and negotiations are Mercury's wheelhouse and the seventh house are legal documents, signings, oath, vows, and agreements. So this could be signing some kind of document at the end of the month or getting ready to do that. It may feel very arduous and difficult. It may not feel easy. Things may feel like they're not quite going the, the way you wanted to want them to, but this is what's going on. Um, and that's about that. I am so hot. I am so hot. It's really muggy and hot here. I'm in Ontario visiting a friend on the way home to see my sister. All right. La Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign. You guys are having the triangle of blue goodness shining a pointy light in your 10th house of reputation and career. Really good for all of that career success energy, especially with that last quarter moon helping you push through to some finish line on some projects you've been working on regarding career reputation and work. And Jupiter from the eighth house looks like a money bonus, right? Or backroom secret deals that support your better success in your career. When it comes to Jupiter here, this is the inheritance bequeathment transit. I'm not trying to work you. It also can mean money coming to you from unlikely sources like a big tax refund or a chunk of money from a, a, an investment. But Jupiter is definitely adding financial goodness to the story around the 23rd and 24th of July. And he also is in a trine to Mercury in your 12th house. Now your 12th house is secret backroom deals and negotiations, hospitals, the same asylum, sanatoriums, self and doing. Um, with Mercury back here, news could come about something going on from somebody you know who's in a hospital in a difficult place. And it could be their information, nothing to do with you, but it's all benefiting you in some way. So great aunt, you know, Matilda, who's been in an insane asylum for 30 years, uh, is it's going to pass on all of her worldly possessions to you or something like that. Uh, that's about that. That looks so positive. Uh, I, I could also say that if you are thinking of traveling to a foreign land, uh, sometimes the 12th house is foreign shores and lands and Mercury is a patron of travel. He loves to keep travelers safe on the road mm -hmm. and you can definitely uh, travel for work or travel for um, occult mysteries and magical learning or things like that. If you're traveling um, around July 23rd, 4th or planning a trip, things go well because of support from Jupiter. That's, that's just the bottom line on that, okay? At the end of the month, though, there's that tension that you experienced last August in 2021 on the Leo uh, Aquarius axis, which is that 12th, 6th house axis. This could have been some constriction last year in August around a, a colleague, a coworker, a situation in the workplace or an employee or employer situation. And it's back again in a new form, of course. And so what backrooms, secrets and deals, but, you know, hidden enemies, right? So the 12th house is people who could undo you because they really don't have your back. And so you have to watch for that as well on the 31st of July regarding the work situation, what person may not have your back. All right. Just keep that in mind. But it also could just be another reoccurring story to do with tension in the workplace. Your health as well, health protocols. Did you have a health challenge last August as a Virgo? And how did it go? And uh, if you do, if it comes back again, what will happen? You'll just go through another challenge that's similar. But it's so much love from Jupiter early in the month. I'm, I'm not as concerned um, as all that. I would say this too, like I think my daughter was a Virgo rising. She's a Virgo rising. She got COVID, Delta, August. I mean, she is a Virgo rising, but it was last August after this opposition between Mercury and Saturn that she came down with Delta, you know? So yeah. So it can definitely impact your health this August. So watch for your health. Be very good with your to yourself, July 31st. Take care of your health uh, as well. Okay. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. Well, in this sky, you have this little blue goodness triangle pointing to the ninth house of God. This is your religious and faith-based stuff. This is trips and travel to foreign lands, tra plan planning that trip. Of course, court cases as well. Jupiter in your seventh house is other people, business partners, audience, clients, marketplace. And he's supporting things in the ninth house now teaching and learning can be ninth house but if you're teaching you're very professorial and if you're learning you're very much a student of academia but if that's true for any of you libras this is a good blessing around relationships with others that support your success in academic environments and then with mercury in the 11th i think it, you know the house of good spirit here um these are messages news and information from soul or friends because the sun's going through here likely very leaderful powerful friends with good news to, to give you on the 23rd and 20 
4th of July. So get ready for good news coming your way. That's definitely what that is uh, from a friend or something like that. And because it's trining your seventh house, it may also involve some good news around legal things to do with contracts and negotiations, which Jupiter rules and the seventh house involves those as well. So this looks very much also like you could have a sweet deal of a century come through that really benefits you on some legal front. Okay. And a friend or ally stepping up to support the success in this area. The gnarly tension at the end of the month, though, where Mercury will oppose Saturn, as he did last August, is going to happen in your fifth house, 11th house axis. And this is tension between your joy, your fun, your play, your pleasure, <laughs> Saturn in your house of fun and play and pleasure. Oh, my gosh. It's like you're going to work hard to have fun. He's been there since December of 2020. So you're, you're used to it, but it's not, not an easy transit. Their children may be uh, difficult and burdensome. Your know, love life may be arid and dry and empty and hard. And, or you could be in a love relationship with someone much older. But, you know, it's that kind of thing. And I would say to you that, you know, the July 31st replay of last August was August 1st, to be precise. Uh, I think tension between these two forces of Mercury and Saturn, it could very well look like something to do with having to um, deal up some kind of conversation that's difficult with somebody who's a friend uh, in your larger social networks regarding fifth house matters, a child, a romance, a creative project, your independent business enterprise. Or you just may get a lot of flack from somebody in a social setting or social group regarding things you're doing in that fifth house. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. The blue triangle of goodness is pointing at your eighth house of other people's money. This is really an ideal triangle for a stock investment that takes off a tax rebate, spousal supports, joint spousal monies, working in your behalf hidden treasures of money. Athena gives you the knowledge, wisdom, and strategy to extract that money on what is basically a last quarter moon. And I think that you'll push through regarding some financial situation that you need to see resolved, especially with Saturn in your fourth house. This could be a real estate deal that finally goes through. This could be a new lease that finally is acknowledged or signed. Something positive to do with real estate may be showing up for a lot of Scorpio rising in particular. Please take care of your health though, because you do have hygiene in the house of your body asking you to tend to your body and be very healthy as you can, as you can during the month of July, August. I didn't talk about her for anyone else. She got thrown in there by mistake, but I mentioned it for you. Um, Mercury's in your career house. This is news and information. Jupiter's in your work and employment environment. So yeah, a promotion, a raise, <laughs> increase in salary, um, an award in your workplace. I mean, you're doing well. You've got Jupiter in the place of the work, your work environment. All right, all right, all right, until October 28th, and then back again, December 20th at five months. So you're killing it in some kind of a work environment, Scorpios. You're on your game. I mean, if you're self-employed, that's true as well. I'm just saying this is your time. And I think some really good news coming through uh, from the boss or the community of your work environment, um, and you're opening up some financial positive from this as well. Um, eighth house could be chunk of money, like a bonus check or um, something like that, or winning an award, a uh, financial uh, contest or award in the workplace and getting a chunk of money coming to you. Uh-huh. <sighs> At the end of the month, on July 31st, Saturn, as opposed to Mercury, which you experienced last August, um, around the early part of August. Now this is the end of August, August 31st. This is going to feel a lot like a tension between things going on at your career and your workplace and in reputation versus things going on in and from and around your domestic private life and home life. Think back to what that was like last August. It's back again, uh, July 31st, you know? Yeah, and it was August 1st, August 2nd last year. But, you know, it kind of vibed out throughout August last year. So it's going to lead into August this year as well. And, you know, with that big boom coming August 1st, which I'm not covering yet for another video, there's a lot going on here at the end of the month. Um, but it certainly could be a big, a big energy of conflict regarding where you live and your work. So, you know, I mean... I don't know, the workplace wants to move you to a new community, but you don't want to commute that far or you want to sell your house, but you can't because it's too, the workplace is too far away. I don't know, but you'll see what I mean. Just watch for that tension at the end of July. 
Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising sign. You can feel the energy of this blue triangle goodness pointing to your house of your marriage partner and, and your significant others like business partners and sometimes your audience, marketplace, the people you serve, your clients. Uh, legal affairs and contracts. So you got a lot going on here. Mercury loves that stuff, right? He's like totally down with legal agreements and contracts. <laughs> and uh, so he's like definitely up for some developments as he is in a, you know, a lovely sex child to his own ho house in your seventh house of other people. This looks like a lawyer often. Athena can play the role of legal advisors and lawyers. And so what kind of legal thing is going on? Because Mercury's in the house of courts. So this is visas, um, legal pro proceedings. So for some of you Sagittarius, is there some kind of legal thing going on? No doubt about it. But also Mercury loves to travel. And if you want to take a trip 23rd, 24th of July, especially uh, foreign lands and foreign shores, you're able to accrue the ticket you need, the visa you want. Things are starting to go forward. Things are starting to flow in that regard. With Jupiter going through your fifth house, Jupiter is expanding your joy, your fun, your play, your pleasure, your money speculative, uh, risky speculation of money can be successful. Jupiter through your fifth house is good for pregnancy should you or your partner want to have a baby. Uh, so keep it, all of this in mind, but certainly in this particular July 23rd, 24th energy, I'd say you're on a bit of a, a real lucky energy here. If you want to sign documents around your independent business or your entrepreneurial stuff, this is really good. And if you want to have um, romance, if you're single, this is romance on a foreign shore, romance with somebody from a foreign land or culture, background, religion, language, or th something like that. This is definitely for some of you looking very romantic, okay? Uh, maybe also becoming a committed relationship from a dating, uh, from dating to committed in a very short time. Um, at the end of the month, you've got the opposition and, oh, and you have children, Jupiter's blessing your children. So this could be information about your children going off to university, being accepted at their ideal school, signing the agreements to go back to that school, to go to that school. So this could be also Sagittarius about your kids, sun, moon, and risings. Um, you know, you'll feel this the most of your, um, between three and 11 degrees of Sag, um, in terms of the good triangle we're looking at. Then sun moon or rising um and then at the end of the month as mercury opposing mercury opposing saturn like he did august 1st beginning of august last year what do you have to deal with that looks like some tension or difficulty regarding visas court cases legal affairs academic environments um in your ninth house ninth house can also be bureaucratic red tape with governments and your third house of trips and travel so this is a little gnarly at the end of the month. You know, I'm not going to not going to mince words there. You could be in trouble regarding getting some kind of legal thing you need for a trip where you can't secure that visa or the vaccine passport you need that you don't have or some new rule comes in to constrict your travel and you're not willing to get a fourth booster in order to qualify for the trip. You know what I mean? So something's going on for Sages here. It's not a long time event. It's kind of looking at like early August is having this tension in your sky, okay? A sibling could also be communicating some difficult information or having a difficult conversation with an aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, nephew, or sibling around the end of July on the 31st. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. So here we have the condition of you experiencing this little blue triangle of goodness pointing at your sixth house. Jupiter is sixth house of work, health, work and health routines, colleagues and coworker space. And Jupiter is giving you a lot of love in a sextile from the fourth house of home. So good things are happening at and from your home around the 23rd and 24th of July. Uh, you're doing something good in the home, expanding your home, building your home larger, maybe, maybe working or teaching or learning from home. And as this is happening, you get some really nice touches around the 23rd and 24th of July to regards how this impacts your health and work. At the same time with Mercury in the eighth house of secrets, and, and things that are hidden as well as um, money. And he's in a money house as a money god, mercantile Kyle merchandise. This is very much something to do with liquidation of assets or stocks or something positive happening with stocks or investments as well. But with a secret spit too, and there's no doubt about it, some secret could be revealed, huh? something news may come to pass, but it's a good revelation for you um, around the 23rd, 24th that bolsters your health and wellness as well as your uh, work routines and habits around both of those things. I could also say that a solar figure could be involved in spilling some secrets, right? So a man uh, would be telling 
you something that you need to hear, uh, that re revealing something that you didn't know. But it's good for you, so that's the good news. And then lastly, at the end of the month, on July 31st, there is that opposition. So go back to last August, because you experienced it then as well, when you had the tension between Mercury opposite Saturn in this quarter of your chart. It's back, and it's about money constriction. It's really about your money. How were you feeling about your finances, possessions, earnings, and as opposed to investments and long-term wealth building? Because that tension was there last August and it's back again to be addressed. Can be news about a stock going down. It could be news from your financial advisor that you have to you know, work a couple more years after all. Saturn has made you serious, sober-minded, and realistic about your money, hardworking. You've been trying probably to save money, Capricorns. This has been ongoing since December of 2020. And you guys are good with resource building. You're materially good. You're an earthy Capricorn. So, <laughs> you know, you're, this is not hard for you to have Saturn moving through uh, the second house necessarily, but look for a little a difficult news or money constriction tension early in the month of July, end of July, early August, I mean. Okay, there we go. Aquarius, that's me, rising, sun and moon people. So this is going to be an energy of fifth house peaking on that blue triangle. You can't see it much anymore, but it's there. And it's happening with the um, Jupiter moving through your third house of trips and travel, local neighborhoods, online stuff, um, skills-based learning, you know, all of that. So, and it's in a sextile to the house of romantic love. So some of you Aquarians are trips and traveling away and it could involve romance on that trip. And on around the 23rd and 24th of July, there's something kind of nicely peaking around the idea of romantic or, or sexual connection, love and romance. Good news coming through because Mercury in the seventh house of committed partnerships, both in business and love, right, are bringing some positive developments. Now, it's not always just about relationships. The seventh house is your audience, your marketplace. I have a YouTube channel. I have people watching my subscribing. So my seventh house are my audience, and that's you guys. And so Mercury can, and sun energy there, you know, in the 23rd and 24th, in a, a flowing connection um, to Jupiter in the third house of the online platforms could just mean some really good developments with your social media outreach as Aquarius. All right. Maybe I'll have a video go, you know, into a new territory of viral content or something. Um, but also legal agreements, Mercury in the seventh house means signing agreements or negotiating contracts. And if you do that uh, with blessings from Jupiter, it supports your finances in a lucky way. If you want to speculate any time around the 23rd, 24th, like buy a lottery ticket, go to the casino and stuff like that. I think with the moon, last quarter moon there and Athena, the goddess of strategy, wisdom and knowledge at the tip of that blue triangle, you could have some success, okay? But you'd be very strategic about it. <laughs> it's more like a poker game to me than anything else. I mean, it's certainly not just a random, you know, lottery ticket, but I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, some money luck could come through there as well. At the end of the month, you know Saturn, right? He's a tough taskmaster going through the house of you, getting you all so reminded about your health and your body and your attention to your identity and well, like we Aquarians have been going through this for almost since 2020, December, we're used to it. That was in earnest because um, he did tiptoe in spring of 2020 as well into Aquarius. <sighs> anyway, so there's Saturn opposition energy uh, to Mercury in our seventh house. Could be news or difficult conversations with some significant person in our life this happening around the 31st of July. Go back to last August, what was going on? I think for me, I could, I could there was a friend of mine in California wanted to come visit me. Um, you know, it was potentially going to be a relationship energy, a connection like that. And um, we had to cancel the trip because he couldn't find his passport and then COVID was picking up again. And so, the, you know, that kind of ties in with, it could be like some plan you have Aquarius again, like last August, now it's back again, July 31st, some kind of news from somebody else that something that you were hoping that was going to work out or happen isn't going to happen. And it just feels like a diff difficult and maybe constraining vibe, a disappointing vibe around that correspondence or communication at the end of July. All righty. You might even find that if you go back to the Kazemi of July 16th, that the July 31st Kazemi Mercury in the heart of the sun is maybe somehow connected to this in some way. 
kind of best laid plans may go askew if they involve another person at the end of the month. Finally, last and never least, is the, uh, you guys, you Pisceans, you watery people, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. The energy here is a blue triangle pointing at your third, fourth house of home. So Pisces, this is good news for your home. Like it could be things you're doing in the home or things you're doing about the home, you know, buying, selling, new lease, new property, uh, fixing it up, getting a new possession in your home, especially because Jupiter is in the house of earnings and money and possessions. This is some kind of bounteousness around home life. Uh, Jupiter here is trying to up your money and earnings strategy and give you more prosperity. He'll be there until October 28th and he'll be back again. And December 20th at five months. So this is not a longer story, but this is a bit of a July 23rd, 24th bonus points on the game board of money connected to things doing you're doing in and from the home or about or in to the home. And you've got Mercury supporting you from the sixth house of work routines and health routines. So for example, you could get like a really good ergonomic chair so that when you're working, you feel good about yourself and your possession in the home to support your health. Or you could find that there's something going on in the workspace, colleagues, coworker space, that is going to lend a hand in your finances. And with that Mercury uh, and a trine to Jupiter, this could look like if you're employed, a raise, promotion, or advancement uh, financially regarding your workspace. The very end of the month is going to bring on the 31st of July or so that Mercury opposite Saturn, it'll be around 22 degrees in your sixth house, 12th house axis. Go back to early August of 2021, where you experienced a bit of that then, because it's kind of just doing a replay, all right? And it is a little different, it always is, but it's the same themes. So did you have a health disappointment or upset or work disappointment or upset or some kind of challenge in those areas? coming through information and news, phone calls, text messages last August, because you might have it again. And Saturn the 12th could be a hidden enemy. So somebody who really doesn't have your back is instigating this like gnarly energy. I'm trying to think, my sister's a Pisces rising. PayPal pulled a plug on her account for no good reason. She couldn't get it back up, her business PayPal. In my memory of it, it happened last August, I think, August of 2021. It could be wrong, but I'm 90% sure that's when that paypal thing happened and i mean guys that's crazy really you know she's just doing nothing but blind faith tarot readings and and she'd never done anything wrong broke any rules and the only way you can get through it on paypal is you got a lawyer and hire a lawyer and they to even tell you what went wrong and she's banned from paypal forever so that happened to her as a pisces rising and that makes sense because i told you guys the 12th house is payment processors like stripe and paypal the third house from the 10th it's like the barter and trade from foreign shores and foreign lands vibe the traveling salesman whatever and I've seen it over and over again. So what kind, if you have a PayPal Stripe account vibe or take credit card payments, you know, from people around the world, you may have a glitch coming in uh, at the end of July in your life as a Pisces rising sun and moon. Okay. Hope that was useful. Hope that made some sense. Oh, if you want to travel to a foreign land, Saturn has been holding you up, constricting foreign travel for you since 2020, December. And now, you know, this could be again, a uh, bad news about a trip that you'd planned. It's not gonna go off as you expected and you're feeling really gnarly about it, um, for example. All right, I hope that helps. I'm gonna send this recording uh, into the universe shortly. I'm recording, by the way, on, I usually get my Patreon community a day advance. This is July 18th. You guys will get this on July the 19th. Big, big hugs to all of you. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Check out my description box below for everything I have to offer, including my new, um, courses coming up, the Professional Astrologer Rock Your Astrobiz course. If you always wanted to get your Astrobiz off the ground, check it out. We start in, I think we're starting in August. <laughs> All right. Ciao, everybody. Bye-bye.